Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build your UX portfolio website using Squarespace. No, this video is not sponsored at all, but it's really just a platform that I prefer and it is currently also the platform that I'm using just for my own website. So I've been getting a lot of requests for this um, to show how to build your website, so I thought it was the right time to finally do that. So without further ado, make sure to like and subscribe for more UX content and let's jump into the video. All right, so let me log on to Squarespace. And I believe you can start off with a free 14 day trial, but um, for myself, I'm just going to go onto my account, account dashboard and go on to create website. So someone has asked me on a previous video, like which template should I use? And I know that, you know, most of these videos, um, most of these portfolios, even the like portfolio themed ones aren't really UX UI focused. But what we're going to do for this is to simply start off with any portfolio template that you want. Um, it doesn't really matter, but at least for myself, I chose a really specific one and it's one of the earlier versions. Yeah, no matter which template you start off with, we're going to change everything up anyway, so it really does not matter. Um, the one I used was called, oh wait, I think I favorited it, yes is called Jasper and it's under the portfolio and photography category. So you're going to start with uh, this template or whatever, which one you choose. All right, welcome to your new Squarespace site start. All right, so this is like the default theme of whatever template that you chose for your website. And to make it more UX UI focused and to have that customization, you're actually going to completely scrap this template. And instead, what you're gonna do is add the plus and start off with a blank page. And then eventually, when you build out this blank page, you'll grow, you are going to set this as your new um, home page that people will eventually see when they log on to your website. So I'm going to name this home page. All right, cool. So now we are on like the uh, fully blank page of your Squarespace website. So what I'm going to do is go on to edit. All right, let's look in my website once more. So what did I do? Yeah, header, I have linked to all the pages and it's pretty much just a grid. Oh, a small note, so like, should you, I do not recommend you to code. It's kind of like a waste of time for now. You can learn HTML, CSS later on, but for this website, builders are completely fine. Um, there's also Wix, Squarespace, Webflow, and I think like Editor X, but I think Wix is probably the easiest to use. Squarespace is the most design, uh, design focused, and the other two, Webflow and Editor X, are the more, more advanced tools. But I think just for your first portfolio website, having this simple grid layout is what I've seen for a lot of like the Fang portfolios, like people who worked at like Google or Facebook. So I think emulating that uh, simple grid uh, layout would suffice for our first one as well. So going back to the editing, you're going to add and start off with a text block. So what did I put here? I said like, hello, I'm Sharon. Added a little emoji. Yeah, I changed it to heading two. And then UX designer, passionate about creating, engaging experiences let me just copy paste that and then it's nice that they already do it but you can literally like you can always um, customize um, what this looks like I default made it bold to make it um, have a bit more contrast and then on the bottom you can add like a ta tagline about like where you studied or um, any other information you would want a recruiter to um, see when they go onto your website and then for this you notice how over here there is a white space I'm going to hover right and the plus signs show up add a spacer block and what i like about squarespace is like it's essentially drag and drop and if you hover over specific areas it'll automatically do spacing for you and then you can adjust accordingly i think i did it around yeah around there we can always change it later and oh yeah for example like parsons um if they want to go into that i also linked everything so you simply highlight whatever you want to I'll link it to, click the link, insert the link, and then apply. So I've done that with Parsons and also my YouTube channel. Next, I'm going to add a divider line and put it in the middle. 
I wanted to span the entire thing, but I think it's having a little bit of difficulty catching that. So let me remove the spacer for now and then insert it later. All right, let me re-add the spacer in. Cool. All right, sweet. Now I'm going to add another text block for a header of all my UX UI projects, uh, projects, and proud. Or <laughs> let me just put down like UX UI projects. Projects. All right, cool. I'm going to add another block, and this is essentially where we are going to add the images or the header cover images of all your uh, work and then link it out to other uh, pages on your website. So let me add an image block, add image. So all the cover images that I've done, um, I, I made on Figma, and then I exported it as a, um, J, a JPEG or a PNG. Here's thumbnail that I've used. Let's wait for it to upload. In a bit, I'll show you like how to basically structure your case studies as well, but I'm going to give a more detailed tutorial later on. Let's wait for that to load. All right, cool. And for design, I'm going to go into the design section and turn it into a stack. And what that's going to do it, uh, is automatically give it an option for a header. So you can put down your um, cover or your title for that on it. And then a subtitle, what did I use? Yeah, enabling college students to stay accountable for their goals. And I know right now it looks really big, but if you add in say another image block, add image, let's add my second um, capstone there. Design sprint. There we go. All right, there it is. So by default, it is just the image, but if I go into design, I'm going to again turn it into a stack, right? Give um, the title, Holmes first design sprint. Oops. and then designing whatever tagline you want uh, for this, like ex additional information before they go into uh, that case study. So now like because these two are really big, I'm simply going to click and then drag it to the side. And you see there's like an indication about where it's going to be, put it in and there you go. So it automatically will adjust like the sizing and spacing of each. But if I really want to, I can also change the size and proportions. But I, I think for this, this is like, looks pretty good to me. So let's keep going. Oh yeah, also for each, if I wanted, I'm going to go into edit and add some animations when you scroll up. And there's like a bunch of different options you can do. Um, I'm going to choose slide up. That's probably my favorite. Let's do slide up again, or you can also do like horizontal, vertical, tilt up. There's a lot of different options. But to stay consistent, I'll stick with slide up. All right, sweet. Let's go back. Yeah, and I left my other one here. So you continue essentially building out um, these images. And then what we're going to do is once you have your page of the actual case study within your website, you will link it. Um, from this image. Okay, so let's keep going, add another image. I also recommend, um, this is what recruiters have told me, that the first project on your website should be the one that you are most proud of and you feel is your strongest work. So add image there. Um, let's see, Parsons UX. Sweet, sweet. Okay, so I see there's a little bit of difference here. I wonder why that is. Oh, uh, okay, it's because um, over here I purposely matched the size. So let me remove this image. I remember I had to like screenshot it and compare the sizes uh, and compare the sizes in Figma. So um, I make sure that like they would align on the top. Let me find the other one that I've made for Springboard. What if I just added a line? 
that make it better? Okay, that, now this works. I don't know what, what took so long. That was really weird. What if I deleted this? Yeah, okay, yeah, it, it works fine now. I don't know why it wasn't aligning before. Oh my gosh, that was so frustrating. I think I spent like, oh my God, I spent like 10 minutes on that. All right, anyway, let's keep going. So um, we pretty much got all of our projects here. Uh, let me just add a divider to add any like social media handles if you wanted because that's just what I have. And then you can add any social links. I believe it is marketing or no. Hmm. Hold up. I don't like this. Move this link. Let's add your email. Sweet. All right, now it shows up there. G. Let's add that too. All right, sweet, finally. All right, let's go back to editing page content. And we're pretty much almost done. Let me edit that for the design to be, yeah, I want it to be large, extra large. Yeah, centered is fine. All right, cool. So we pretty much have like our, our homepage set up. So all we need to do is get rid of the top of the work about mood board because those are not, are not yours. You could also replace it with your own if you want, and then simply link it out to um, other pages where you actually have a case study for each of these projects. So let me go to pages, secondary navigation about and mood board. Um, I'm just going to hide that. Hide this as well. You can also delete it, it doesn't matter. All right, sweet, everything is working. And let me add a new page, blank page. Let's say like on it one, whatever. Oh, also small tip for your slug. I'm going to do like on it. Yeah, enable page, save, cool. But you see right now, if you do that, it shows up on the header when we want it on the bottom. So you're actually going to put it underneath work. Like here. All right, sweet. So for example's sake, let's do this. Text. Old on it case study. All right, let's add main image block. Go to First one, thumbnail, cool. Again, this is gonna be a separate tutorial about uh, ma making your case study. So if you have any questions on that, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Um, all right, so let's just wait for this to load. Right, it's like on it. I have yet to, so because this is like a template, you would have to like subscribe first to actually preview it. So let me go onto my actual website builder, which is this one. So what I've done is see, it's pretty much the same thing where I have everything. Go to pages. These are all of my projects, my on it, my homes first, um, my motion graphics, Parson student portal. And what I do is if this is my true website, uh, this is why it's important that you consider the slugs or um, yeah, the slug like this is the slug on it. So if I just do like Sharon Yun Kim slash that slug, that specific case study will show up, which is here. So one more time. So to do that, you go, you make a new page, right? You make a new page, blank page, build out your case study. And for each of those pages, go into settings, Go to the slug, so it goes like your site title slash that slug name. So mine would be Sharon Yoon Kim slash on it, right? Copy this link, go into your main navigation works, edit, go into that specific um, piece, and then you link it to that page, save. 
So now, essentially, if you go back on to your website, you click it, and then it will lead to your case study. All right, so we're pretty much done with the general things. I guess just a few more finishing touches. Um, yeah, so like I also um, added my resume. You can like feel free to add any links. And then so I decided to use my resume and it would lead. Uh, it would lead to my Figma file. Also the same. Um, the last thing is, so pretty much let's go to the original one where it was just a fresh template that I've used in the beginning. So this is what you use, right? So we created this brand new um, page called homepage. But right now, say if you were to subscribe and type in your name, it would still lead to that original template, uh, this one. So instead, what you want to do is go to that um, homepage screen that we just made, go into, go into settings, right? And then make this set as homepage. Scroll to the bottom and click on set as homepage. So yeah, it would be the first thing visitors to your site will see. Confirm. So that is now set as your official homepage. And then finishing touches, edit your site title, put in your name, tagline like UX, UI designer, and YouTuber. Oops. Cool. You know, since we're at it, let's go onto my LinkedIn profile as well and just link that and finish everything up. View profile, copy, go onto your site. All right, this is the one we just made. Back to home, pages, new page, link, um, LinkedIn, link here, save. Now it'll show up. You can also change the order, so I want this after home page or even home page. I don't want it to be let me change the title of this instead of homepage to be um, top of the browser window it's both to works my work okay sweet my work LinkedIn this work I don't need to enable that page and even though, you know, like on it is underneath work, because you still linked it um, outside of this page, it doesn't matter. It will still work exactly the same. So add a link. Um, also add like resume. And let's go onto my file. So I made my resume on Figma. What I do, yeah, so I made my resume on Figma. I simply share prototype. Copy link, link it, save. All right, and I'm going to put that in between. So if you see it here, my work resume, LinkedIn. And this is pretty much how you have it. So you have all your projects upcoming. You can continue to add more work if you want. Um, and this would link to additional social media handles if you want that as well and yeah i mean it's pretty much wraps up how to make your portfolio site on squarespace so this concludes the tutorial for how to build your ux portfolio website using squarespace i hope this was helpful for you i know there's not a lot of tutorials on that i've seen chun buns do a similar one with wix so i mean if you are interested in squarespace i hope this was like a good 20 30 minutes for you if you have any other questions or any technical difficulties about how to approach this or other questions or comments in general, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I will make sure to get back to you on that. If you have any other ideas for future UX content or things you'd like to see, feel free to let me know as well. So that is all for today's video. Thank you for watching and until next time.